Hello everyone and welcome to another Frigid Day in Colorado. I'm Chase. And I'm Joby. And that is the 2024 Chevy Silverado 1500 ZR2. And this is the Overrun. Now, if you hadn't noticed, this is the off-road version of the uh, 1500. That is the ZR2, obviously. That's what that's there for. So everybody in the parking lot knows, so you know, so I know. Now, there is also a Bison edition, which is mostly cosmetic, sort of like the AEV edition, GMC, Joby and I tested a little while back. But what you need to know is that means bigger tires, a lift, a whole complement of skid plates and locking differentials to help you get around off-road, in the snow, wherever you might be. Now, let's talk numbers. This one, starts at $69,900. However, also nice, however, this one has got some options on it and the total comes to $75,405. That's largely due to the technology package, which adds a lot of technology. There's all the camera angles. There's also the multicolor 15 inch head up display, which is very useful, adaptive cruise control, power and trailing brake, et cetera, et cetera. Let's see how easy it is. You know, the fun thing about reviewing cars and trucks is uh, we obviously have to open up the engine bay to show you the engine and every single time at the different process on how to open it let's see how quick it's gonna be. oh there it is haha -ha! now that i have opened the hood let's take a look at what is underneath it powering the silverado zr2 is a three liter inline six turbo diesel which produces which is made it to a 10 speed automatic transmission. And of course has lovely four wheel drive, which is an absolute must for any serious off-road driving. One last quick thing before we move on to our next segment, I just wanted to quickly touch on the fuel economy. Chevy and the EPA states that this has a combined fuel economy of 21 miles per gallon for both city and highway. In our testing, we're seeing more about 23 miles per gallon, but that's mostly highway driving. So obviously that'll vary. And especially if you're going off-road, that's definitely gonna decrease because that's just what happens when you go off-road. Let's talk about styling for the Silverado ZR2. Now, this hasn't been refreshed. It's actually been the same design for a number of years now from GMs. Two. Two years, sorry. Um, but yeah, this is uh, fairly similar. If you've seen other reviews of previous years, uh, it'll be pretty much the same. But one cool thing right here in the front is there's actually nothing in the logo. You can just stick your hand in it, which is kind of funny. Um, and you could you know, work on the engine without actually having to open the hood, which is pretty nice. Just kidding, obviously you can't do that. But um, for the ZR2 model specifically, we have some recovery hooks down here. Uh, which is good because obviously we're not the most competent off-road drivers. So if we did get stuck, someone could in theory pull us out. Uh, let's talk about the paint. This is obviously red. <laughs> so that, there's that. Um, but more importantly, there is this gloss black sort of what a sticker, I guess. No, it's paint. It's paint. It is painted, but more importantly, it's gloss black, which I don't know how well you can see it now, but the sun is shining and it's going to hit this, uh, this little black gloss piece right here. And when you're driving that reflects right into your eyes, which yeah, is let's, let's show the people. Yeah. So it's also gloss black back here. And so when you're sitting in the truck, obviously that's, you know, bad at certain yeah. times of day. Not great. Not great. Not great. We but you need to put dash flecking on your. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, overall, I mean, I think the front end, there are led headlights, uh, up here. Uh, I think they work pretty well. I pretty similar to the, uh, 2,500 that we had last week or whenever, I guess you're watching this. Um, yeah. Our so, upload schedule is so bad. Yeah, yeah. It's, there's a lot anyways, but it's the same sort of general design. Um, and it works well. And I think the front end actually looks really good, uh, here. And Chase mentioned this earlier, but there is some ZR2 badging. I wouldn't say this truck is overly badged at all, but there is one right there. There's also a little Duramax badge up on the thing. That's there is black and extremely That way, you know, see. this is a Duramax. You got the diesel. You got, you got the big, Boy. with Anyways. less horsepower than the v8 yeah and worse sound yeah but potentially better towing potentially yeah anyways uh moving on to the wheel setup here obviously we have these goodyear all-terrain tires yeah, the wranglers yeah okay yeah so goodyear wranglers and i don't know off the top of my head how big these wheels are but they're uh gloss black which i'm not the biggest fan of um i do like black Bring wheels back good wheel colors 
Yeah, I kind of wish these were, it would be kind of cool to see if these were like gold wheels. Yeah. I think the red and gold would look really cool. Yeah. But anyways. Get the good color. Get the good color. Anyways, moving on to this side, the biggest thing I want to touch on here, because we literally touched this on a bunch of trees, um, <laughs> is the mirror housing. This is mostly plastic. Oh, well, it's actually all plastic. I'm sorry. Uh, but there are some lights in here for your turn signals so that... Uh, well, I think that's also for like cabin lighting so you can... Is there down firing? You know, oh, there is. There's a light right here. And there's actually some cameras and stuff here as well. Yep. Uh, we'll get more into the camera system in the interior. But yeah, overall, it is a pretty nice truck. I don't really have anything else in terms of the exterior styling. Of course, with the off-road stuff, you have some of the uh, plastic cladding and wheel arches. But overall, the exterior styling definitely leans more towards an off-roader and definitely differentiates itself from and the rest. On that note, I want to hit on something really very quickly. It's worth noting that this is the narrow body or a narrow body car. It's not like a Raptor where it's really wide, which while we've been off-roading has been very nice. Uh, this is loosely adjacent to some of the top end off-roaders that do have wide bodies and it's nice to have a narrower body. Now, if you want to put things in the back of the ZR2, there's a couple ways to do it. Um, first, we have the split loading tailgate. You can either don't struggle too hard. Yeah, you can you can open it like that if you have to fit something really crazy long in there. Or as I will demonstrate in a moment, you can also use it to get into the bed if you don't want to use the little corner side steps. You do that and then you hit that top release button again. This drops down and then you have to really pull on it. But then ta-da! Now we can step in. Yeah, there's also a handle for gracefully entering for sure I, I didn't but and then you're in uh you can also drop the handle down it stows away right here um there's led lighting in the bed which is very nice uh it's it's actually super super bright i'd love to show you but it's you know daytime um there's also a spray in bed liner obviously with some nice zr2 badging at the back which is kind of neat i think you can see it yeah hopefully yeah. um that's really it back here. It's got a really, really big bed, and we should also probably get some bed measurements. It's a six foot bed. It's a six foot bed. So that'd it's be 72 inches. 72 inches. Quick maths. All right, let's go ahead and talk about the interior. We're gonna start with the rear. Um, first and foremost, one thing that's weird on this truck, and obviously could be changing the aftermarket or maybe with some trims, is there's no step to actually help you get in, um, which with 11 inches of ground clearance is kind of a problem, especially for short people like Chase. What he Wait, ends up having to like do- you're like an inch tall. Hold on, hold on. What he ends up having to do is something like this. We have to do the hell divers to get in. Yeah, except he doesn't have as graceful Just of as a athletic. vertical as me. But anyways, once you're back here and you've dolphin dove into the back, it's pretty nice. Um, a lot of the same, Material quality that you find up front carries here in the back, and you obviously have this jump seat. And we covered this last time, but there's a little jack and stuff here. But yeah, you could a blanket for the dog. Yeah, you could in theory throw some other stuff in there, and obviously it folds down. Oh, look, it's also got. Remember from the GMC? It's oh got yeah, the, it's got the Glock compartment. It's got your. It's not for Glock. Illicit for Glocks substance yeah. cargo area, which it's is for kind of small off-roading accessories. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for very small like white powdery off-road accessories. <laughs> Anyways, um, but actually being back here is pretty nice. One thing I want to touch on um, is the floor back here is really flat. There's a little indent for the transmission tunnel right here. Yeah, like a um, drive shaft or something. Yeah, but for the most part, it's actually pretty flat, which means that you could, you know, especially if it like groceries or something else. Um, I did. That's how I got the groceries the other day. Yeah, see? I threw, I threw three You have a first-hand account yes. of this. So anyways, but... There are heated seats back here, both of these two side yeah, that's seats. that's standard on the ZR2. Yep. And oh, uh, so is the crew cab, by the way. So the crew cab with the extra leg room is standard on the ZR2. Yeah. Um, and then the other thing for connectivity, we have a USB-C and a USB-A. Same as what we saw with the 2500 that we reviewed as well. Um, honestly, the interiors are fairly similar, which makes sense because they're... I think the 25 was a little nicer, materials-wise. I think they're about the same. Okay. We'll agree to disagree. Yeah. Um, we yell anyways, about these things off camera. But there's a ton of room back here. There's that same nice indent. Um, so if you're a little bit taller, unlike Chase and I, um, you would fit just fine. Uh, tons of leg room. I mean, I'm 5'9", um, and there's tons here. I could be, I don't know. 6'4", and probably still have good leg room. Yeah, there's plenty. Um, so yeah, there are no climate controls back here. That's one thing that Chase mentioned in our last video, um, which is kind of surprising, especially considering this car is 78, or truck, sorry, is $78,000. You would think that there'd be rear climate control. But there's yellow stitching. 
<laughs> is that yellow or is that like lime green? No, it's yellow. I don't know. Well, Pull we'll agree to disagree. Anyways. That's, dude, that's yellow. Okay, guys, is that yellow? I'm going to say that that's, that's Dude, that's yellow. If you color correct this to make it green, I'll have you shot. Oh, one thing that we forgot to touch on is the carbon fiber that's on the... I don't know that that's... It's like knurled plastic. It's something. <laughs> um, it's different from what else is back here. It's not just crappy black plastic. And that's it's what not. Matters. Um, but yeah, also the vents back here, the little air vents, Small. are tiny. Um, yeah, sad. zoom in on that. Yeah. And Chase has small hands, so that should show you how... How are you small just gonna that? Back I'm me. just kidding. I'm sorry. <laughs> Anyways, there are cup holders, but that's all that you really oh, need. The... Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, This is powered. It's powered, yes. Yeah. So powered. you do it on a little switch up here in the yeah. in the thing, so you yeah. get to feel like a fighter pilot. We'll get to that in that you know review of the or the overview of the front end. But that's the back seats of the ZR2. Joby says to say now that we're up front. So now that we're up front, um, you've completely derailed my train of thought. But we, what we were going to talk about is the um, amount of places to put things in full-size trucks we're back uh there's a lot of places to put stuff in here especially like small items your sunglasses etc there's little like pockets littered throughout the center console for various things and i'm gonna have to get up i can't like ugh, i'm too <laughs> short for this after i made all those short jokes <laughs> yeah uh there's also super giant deep door pockets oh, i can just probably, look yeah, at mine there sorry there you go um, the, there is, although that brings up, you can't really get to the furthest back one too well. Like I've got Joby's phone down here Let so that see. I can send his wife rude oh. messages. Whoa, that's me. Uh, and I kind of had to fish for it and then you really got to like get down in there, but there is a lot of places to put things and the center console is obviously massive. And we've there's already a little, dirtied it. We've already it. just decimated it, <laughs> but there's, there's some good room in here. You can like put this ta-da and be a little bit more organized than we are there's also power on both sides and a wireless charger what i like about the chevy wireless chargers is that that's like mostly enough ventilation to allow you to not have your phone overheat which is super great that was a very poor way to put it but let's go ahead and turn it on so that you guys can see the infotainment and the wheel controls and all that and hear that powerful oh, diesel that engine constant chevy ding uh, oh yeah that too i guess yeah why is your god your heated seat is on yeah dude i was cold when i got in here it's like 49 degrees outside anyway yeah now um and it turns that's something to know oh no copyrighted music shit this isn't j cole it's it's cole j don't worry about it infotainment <laughs> there's one center screen it's a digital center screen there's a good degree of customization you can kind of toggle through stuff in the middle you can see that our mpg has already dropped precipitously now that we've been sitting here and you can toggle through a couple of other different settings you can also alter the information that's on the left or right side i can go through a couple different settings on each side uh, which is very nice let's do this one for shits and gigs ta-da uh, and then your drive mode adjustment, now that we're looking at it, is like way down here. Here, I'll, Yeah, I'll, you grab it. I'll take it and I'll show the people. It's down here. So these are, this is lighting controls, bed lighting, obviously, and then drive modes, trailer stuff, four-wheel drive settings, parking brake. What I really like is that there's physical HUD controls, too. These are for adjustment of the heads-up display, which you may or may not be able to see. Nope. Not at all. Not in the slightest. It's there, you're just gonna have to trust me. Moving to the center screen, there's wireless projection. Uh, as you can see, you can hook up Android Auto and or CarPlay. Now, they have recently moved to the Google built-in. Is it gonna do it? No, it didn't. They have recently moved to the Google built-in system, which means that you get the assistant. You also have Google Maps just built in, and you can access all of your vehicle settings from here. However, you'll note that once, oh, we're already on the home screen, you'll note that the camera button is here, uh, which means that like if we're in a phone projection software, I have to hit the home button and then go to cameras and then I get the cameras. And when you're trying to like pull into a parking space or something, it's super annoying. Um, other than that, the built-in system works pretty well. Uh, it's really just like using Android Auto. So if you have any experience with that at all, that's exactly what it's like. Now let's move on to the climate controls. We'll turn them on for you so you can hear the fans go. Uh, there's ventilated seats. I like that there's some adjustment here. Jesus, why did you turn that on so far? Yeah, it's super high. It's just because it's a million degrees in here. Uh, but you can turn on a heated backrest or all of the heated surfaces. This is obviously your trail brake. And there's some hard buttons up here for your various off-road things. You can drop the tailgate, turn off a few sensors, and then these are your differential lockers here if you are not already making use of that in the off-road drive modes. Uh, 
One final note on storage that I did forget about is there's the cool split glove box arrangement. So you can do that or you can do that. That's pretty much it. Okay, driving. We're, we're driving off-road by the way. We're off-road. We're off-road. Um, I'm in the like off-road drive mode and let's just get it out of the way real quick. You experienced something kind of weird on the way over here. Yeah, so when we were coming up here, what would happen is if I don't really know if there's like a specific situation where I can replicate it or try to explain it, but essentially what would happen is if maybe I was going over a bump or something, it would pull all of the throttle out. And so even if my foot was to the floor, it just wouldn't do anything, which was kind of weird. Yeah. Uh, but then the second I put it back in normal, it was fine. So I'm in off-road mode and have been for the last maybe 10 or 15 minutes. And I also haven't been able to replicate it. So maybe it was just some sort of weird, like one of us accidentally turned on crawl control or something or hill descent assist i don't know um kind of strange but other than that which is probably a one-off i have yet to experience a situation where this truck has been flummoxed by what we're doing yeah i'm even like intentionally off the track here there's ruts in the road and i am trying to get it stuck and it's still just kind of figuring it out yeah no the off-road performance has been really good honestly yeah really um, we did a low traction launch when we left the filming site uh with the lockers on in four high and it i mean it was like we were on dry pavement yep. it's really impressive the thing to note i think uh, under this very specific off-road driving scenario is because there's a lot of snow and loose surfaces we're kind of cattywampus right now even yeah so the rear slides out yeah the rear will kind of step a little but the traction control will step in if it thinks it's too much and on top of that my big issue with it is really just that like there's no steering feel it's it feels like it's almost like steer by wire yep um so i can't really tell what the wheels are doing which in a low traction circumstance i would very much like to do other off-roaders that i have driven have a little bit better steering feel um i would like some more of that fed to me other than that though especially with the 11 point whatever inches of ground 11.4 11.9 11 something like that it's like functionally impossible to get this thing stuck on 99 percent of trails i'm sure if we went to moab or if we went and did the lower part of this trail that shall remain unnamed mm. uh, which is significantly more difficult and technical and probably largely impassable in the winter we could get it stuck but we're not going to because this isn't our car yeah but let's talk about on-road performance because that's kind of where <laughs> things get a, a little size, different. A, yeah, yeah, it's a full-size truck, man. And yeah. I think it drives like one. It drives better than the 2500. It handles sure. much better, yeah. Yeah, and it's, it, granted, the 2500 is a bigger truck with stiffer spring rates to account for towing capacities, etc. But this is much more livable on the road. It feels, a lot, uh, feels a lot smaller. I think that a 1500 is what most people are going to need. Yep. You know, if I see a GMC on the road, it's it's the 1500, yep. not the 25 or the yeah. HD. Chevy does critically make an HD Silverado ZR2. So if you need that, you can go get that. Yep. Uh, this really feels like the sweet spot. I agree. The only thing I want to touch on with the on-road driving is the brakes. Oh, yeah, truck brakes. It is, yeah, it's not unique to the ZR2 or this Full size truck, truck brakes, specifically. Man. But yeah, the brake pedal it feels really bad like you really have to depress the brake yeah before panic it... stops are really tough yeah uh, i had to do a panic stop on the highway 80 miles an hour down to 25 both feet on the pedal full abs the tire i actually overwhelmed the abs system and locked up all four wheels at one point the braking performance in emergencies is something you should be aware of. It's, it's, this car just needs more stopping power. Yeah, but overall the assists work really great. Yeah, the cruise I, control's good. Yeah, the adapter cruise control is good. Um, it has the little big vibrating pot, seat. Fun Ooh, send it, there you go. <laughs> big puddle. Oh, 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 geez. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it has the little function and a lot of GMC or GM products have this uh, where when you depart or start to depart from a lane the seat vibrates which is on the nice. corresponding side yes. which I really yeah. love yeah especially in a big car like this if you're like trying to you know maneuver it's just it's so much easier to be able to tell where you've gone wrong yeah uh, I know it sounds like oh obviously I've left the left side of the lane but sometimes it's not always so cut and dry yeah especially 
in a big truck like this. Yeah. And then one last thing I wanted to touch on too is this truck does have a Bose sound system. I've been very critical of Bose sound systems in the past. Uh, there's been a number of cars and trucks that we've reviewed that have had their sort of like universal, Kona. yeah. yeah. Um, and I haven't really messed with this one, but you have, and you said that after EQing it, it was pretty solid. Yeah, I, I messed around with the equalizer, uh, and you can kind of get rid of the flatness. My running theory is that this is just a bigger truck and therefore bigger speaker. Yeah. And, and, and more more range. Pay attention. Um, Jesus. Well, it's, I'm just kidding. It's, I'm just moving. Moving. it's just a little <laughs> movement, a little, a little incident. But yeah. yeah. That's it. That's yeah. it. That's it. That's the driving let's, let's impression. But yeah, it's a it's a monster off-roader. And now for our conclusion. Now that we have taken a look at the Chevy ZR2, let's go ahead and wrap this video up and let you know what our final thoughts and overall conclusion of the ZR2 is. Chase? So I think that this is a good place for this truck to be. It's a little bit cheaper than like a Raptor or a TRX when they were making them. Um, it's at seventy five thousand dollars. Yeah, it's a lot of money, but this is kind. Of, it does everything. It's narrow body, so you can still kind of off road it without being too worried about the length of the width. There's tons of ground clearance. At least number by number, it's a better off roader than the equivalent Tacoma, or I'm sorry, Tundra TRD. Da 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 da. Yeah. Um, I think that it, it, for a full size truck, its on road manners are pretty good. I really bagged on the Multimatics in our twenty five hundred review. Uh, Rightfully so, to be I fair. Think that the, I think that the ride here is significantly improved. Yes, this truck tows less than the 2500, uh, but and it it's also- it's not really positioned to be a work truck. Yeah, it, it also rides a lot better. Um, I think that here, the Multimatics work really great. They feel like they're worth it. Um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think it's really solid. I, I have my issues with some of the interior stuff, like having to press through the buttons to get the camera is really dumb, especially on a big full-size truck like this. But uh, Yeah, I agree. I think overall the off-road prowess, I mean, obviously we're in, right here is probably a good six inches of snow. Yeah, we've um, compacted it a lot, but there are, there's a lot under us. If you have seen our Defender 130 review, if you haven't, please go watch it. But if you have, you would know that this is actually the exact same spot that we filled, uh, filmed that review. We film all of our off-road reviews in the same location for a couple of reasons. One, because it's easy to get here. And also that way the testing is generally pretty equal across all the different vehicles. But this truck has handled this trail with all of this snow pretty much without issue. The only thing that I didn't like was the off-road mode not really being all that great for off-road and I just switched it to normal. But overall, the actual driving dynamics on the off-road side were very, very good. And I never felt any lack of confidence in terms of what the truck could do. The only lack of confidence was with what I could do. And for- Skill issue. Skill issue. Skill issue. Skill issue is a better way to put that. Skill yeah. issue, yeah. But overall, I think it's great. I think it's, I agree with the pricing in terms of it be, being just under the Raptor. Um, and I think it's a great truck. I think the interior, like Chase mentioned, has some quirks or whatever. Um, but in general, this is a really good product, especially if you're looking to have a nice full-size truck, but also have that added off-road capability. And that's kind of it. With that in mind, please do remember, like, subscribe, bell, notification, ritual sacrifice, all of that stuff. Those boosts are metrics, which means we get to keep doing this and standing in the wet, cold snow. Yeah, I love it. On a Saturday. Really, we do actually like it. I do. So thanks I for do. watching. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.